Hey everybody. So we're, um, we just did some complicated stuff with dates. We're going to keep pushing the envelope a little bit here. And we're going to start thinking about dates for people. Um, let me show you what that means. So um, just select all from payment again. Just remind ourselves of, of what, we're, um, what we're working with. <clears throat> what is going on? Oh, this is still uncommented. Okay. <clears throat> right, so we, we've got this table and it has uh, entries uh, for payments made by customers. Um, what if we wanted to start thinking about when we, you know, say we're spending a lot of money on marketing and we're trying to acquire lots of customers. It may not be for a DVD rental company, but it's likely to be the case if you're working at a company. Um, how do you know, you know, how many new customers you had at any given point in time? Um, this is a key question that starts dealing with customer lifetime value, acquisition, cost per acquisition. These are all questions that you're going to get a lot if you're working in data analytics, data science, business intelligence, and it's stuff you got to know cold. Um, so if any of this stuff gets confusing, just watch it over and over again. I'm going to try to talk a lot and be really verbose. Um, so let's just think it through conceptually, right? What do we, at a minimum, we need to know like what the minimum date is for any customer, right? So we know, let's just, let's just try some stuff, right? So let's say, um, let's call payment P, just try to use your aliases. And, um, what do we want? We want the, um, let's just do P star and also just do the, um, try the minimum, right? So P dot payment date. See what happens. All right, so again, we need to, uh, to group by maybe four. All right, so let's see if this makes any sense first. So let's order by the, the customer ID by um, two ascending and, well, just do one, see what happens. All right, so this is customer one. We have uh, the payment ID. So what you'll notice about this database is that the payment ID increases over time as more payments are made. So most databases, you can kind of re re you know you can rely on this pattern where the the primary key of the table goes up over time. And since there's probably an index on it, it it's pretty fast when you're trying to to order or sort by things. So right now. Um, we've got, we're starting to try to figure out what the first payment was for a customer, but the problem here is that when we, um, when we have all these columns and we're asking for the min, it's the min with respect to everything else. So it's not really going to give us anything interesting here. If we just take P dot customer ID and min payment date. It's going to complain about uh, what's in the group by here because we no longer have all those columns. Um, let's just see what happens. So this might actually work. Um, this is giving us a, uh, a customer ID and their true minimum uh, purchase date. So let's just prove it though. Um, Select all from payment P, where P dot customer ID equals, let's do 416. We know that uh, for customer 416, their minimum, according to this query, is uh, 14th of February. So let's just do 416, just to gut check ourselves. And, um, um, so yeah, so 214. That's right. That is their that is their minimum. So we're getting there. We're making some progress. It's not it's not going to work yet for various reasons. But let's just think about what we could do with this this kind of simple thing that we've concocted here. So I don't really care about the time. I just want the date. Um, so we have a customer. 
and their date. Now, what if we wanted to know um, uh, new customers by date? All right, well, one thing we could do here, last time I introduced um, the outer select, I'm just gonna do something called a common table expression. So a common table expression, it's basically a handy way to create a table without having to create a table. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm just going to wrap this up and say um, with first payments, I'm going to say as, and you'll get the hang of this after a while. Let's do a little indent here just for clarity. Um, just do select all from first payments. Right, I have the wrong, it's going the wrong way. Okay, so basically we created a common table expression here. We're selecting from it. This is just kind of like an in-memory table almost. It kind of helps us simplify things. And what we want to do, um, let me just call this as first order. Just to make it simpler when you're looking at it. Forget that underscore. All right, so now we're going to want to take the week or the day, and we're going to want to count the number of customers. So really what we want to do is um, let's alias it, because big boys and girls alias things. And we're going to say uh, fp dot first order date. And then we're just going to do some, what are we going to do here? We're going to do, now we're just going to do a count. Because we, all we really were interested in here is we just want the number of rows for each date because each combination of a first purchase date and a customer ID is the number of customers that you acquired on that date. So we're going to do the date. We're going to get the count star uh, from first payments FP. And if you're wondering whether I'm going to let it make an error, I am because you got to make sure you use a group by. And instead of using one, just in case you're a little confused, I'm just going to use the name of the column. All right. So now we have our date. I'm going to call it new buyers. Great. So we've got the date. We've got the number of new buyers. And um, kind of a shame this business hasn't been around that long. But, uh, you know, they've, they've certainly acquired some new customers. Um, I'm going to change it back to one here. So I think it looks better. So now that we have this, just quickly recap, we started with this. Um, we basically, for every customer ID, we took their the minimum value of the payment date, and we called it the, uh, the first order date. And since we needed to do some operations on this as if it were a table, like imagine we just had this as a table. Um, we wrapped it in a, a with statement and you could select now from first payments as if it were a table. So we did. And um, the result here was that we took the date, we counted the number of rows since each row was a customer and a date. The count would give us the new buyers for that day. And uh, here we go. So we did answer the question well of, of how many new buyers we got on any given day. Um, this is a pattern you'll see a lot. First payments. Uh, let me show you a different way we could have done it. Let's just start with um, uh, with this. <clears throat> and let's say select um, all from T. And just make sure that works. Right, but really we're want, going to want to do a t dot first order date count star from t, and again, again, you still got a group by one, and that should return similar results. So there we go. So again, it depends on what's easier to read. Some people like to see this uh, this width statement, especially if you're organizing really big queries. This is still a pretty small query. Um, but you could also just do the uh, the outer select here, and you'll get the same result. Um, next time we'll start looking at uh, 
how to handle activity within some kind of a date range and maybe basing it off uh, an initial starting date for each customer. And that's where it's going to start to get really cool.